What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Spencer, master student studying in Singapore, and currently doing a research on quantum computer hardware at A Star. Before we dive in, this video is divided into four parts, and you can feel free to jump to a specific section by using the timestamp on the progress bar. Let's get into it. Cryptocurrencies concurrently crashed in the last few weeks, especially on 19th May, such as Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Dogecoin, all plunged dramatically, which caused over half of a million investors' accounts to blow up. And this tragedy happened within only 24 hours. In the meantime, one of the cryptocurrency exchange platforms was down during the crash. Another platform, Binance, announced on Twitter that they suspended a withdrawal of Ethereum as well as some leverage token trading. There are many conjectures for this crash. Some people say that maybe it's because Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla would stop taking Bitcoin as a payment method for new vehicles. Others suggest that probably is because China banned crypto services for its financial institutions. Aside from all those possible reasons, JP Morgan reported that some institutional investors are dumping Bitcoin and reinvested in gold, which is also a possibility for this crash. So do you notice that I kept using uncertain words like maybe, perhaps, uh, probably, because that's related to today's topic. How can we uh, solve all these uncertainties in financial market and predict the result that can help us make decisions? There were so many black swan events in our life, such as COVID-19, Donald Trump, Brexit, all these uncertain events will affect the financial market and we never know how strong it could be. But we cannot await our doom. We have to take some actions to forecast the investment outcomes in order to reduce the impact of these uncertainties. And that's how Monte Carlo simulation came on the scene. So what is Monte Carlo simulation? The official definition is a Monte Carlo simulation is a model used to predict the probability of different outcomes when the intervention of random variables is present. So what does that mean? Generally speaking, it's a model to help people find all the possible outcomes and their probability. For example, if we want to predict the future price of Bitcoin, what we need to do is to use the Monte Carlo method to predict many, many different prices and summarizes the probability of each price. Then we can get the probability distribution graph of the future price of Bitcoin. Say if all the predicted prices are going down and we can get a distribution graph like this, then we know we don't have to buy Bitcoin now. But if all predicted prices are going up, then we can buy Bitcoin now. So why Monte Carlo method can predict the probability? We have to take a deeper look and break it down. Monte Carlo method can be divided into two parts. The first one is called drift, which is generated from historical data and is a constant. Another part is called sample. Basically, we have to create a random number. Then we multiply this random number with the standard deviation from the drift in order to get the sample. Actually, the sample is restricted to a range. It's really important for speeding up the simulation process, and I will introduce in the next section. After getting these two parts, we can create a formula to predict the future price trend. The only thing we have to do is to repeat this calculation again and again to extend the trend line. When we reach the day that we want to predict, say a month, then we can start from the beginning and build another line, and another line, and another line. But how many trend lines we have to build? It depends on when we it converge. Because each trend line is a possibility, so we have to build as much as possible to cover all the possibilities. So as you can tell, the whole process, like building all these trend lines, is time consuming. Which means the predicted prices are outdated. Since we are in a volatile market, things are changing very fast. We cannot make decisions based on the outdated prices. For trading, time is money. And that's why we need a machine to do this job better. That is quantum computer. In terms of this new technology, the world leading financial institutions like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs found its huge potential to apply to their financial services, such as risk analysis and derivative pricing, because these two are super important in financial business, and they're both based on the Monte Carlo method. JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs both have their dedicated teams to build the quantum algorithms which can boost up the Monte Carlo simulation. And Goldman Sachs claimed that they collaborated with quantum software company Q 
QC Weir and developed something called shallow Monte Carlo algorithms, which can speed up the Monte Carlo simulation to a hundred times faster on the future quantum computer in five years. And it's pretty impressive to me. It's like within the near future, quantum computers are good enough to be used in the real life cases. But why they have to wait for another five years to implement their shallow Monte Carlo algorithms? Because for nowadays quantum computer, there's not enough qubits for them to implement their algorithm. If you don't know what is qubit and why we need more of them, you can check out this video over here. So for JP Morgan, they took a different way. They claimed that they weren't able to measure qubit during the execution of a circuit and then reset qubit and reuse it. In this way, they can work their algorithm on fewer qubits. Uh, I think it's a smart way to do it with the contemporary quantum computer technology, but in the future, we still have to create a quantum computer with more qubits to cater for the more use cases. All right, we've been talking about so many things about Monte Carlo simulation so far, but why quantum computers can speed up the Monte Carlo process or even replace it by quantum algorithms. The quantum computer uses a method called amplitude estimation, which can achieve a near quadratic speed up over the best possible classical algorithm. For classical Monte Carlo simulation, the samples we use to do the simulation sometimes will get ridiculously far away from the average value, so we need to use a tool to constrain it. This tool is called Chebyshev's inequality, which is something look like this. This inequation has an upper bound sigma square over epsilon square, which basically determines the running time of the simulation. But this term, sigma square over epsilon square, is rather complicated. You cannot get anything from it. So for simplicity, we can rewrite it to this term, 1 over square root of m. And m is the number of samples used. Someone did a calculation before. If we want to estimate outcomes up to four decimal places, because sometimes we want our results to be as accurate as possible, we would need to run over 100 million trend lines, which means we have to use 100 million samples, which is insane. But if we use quantum computer to do the same simulation, the upper bound of the samples is changed from 1 over square root of m to 1 over m, which can speed up the whole simulation process. Maybe you're still wondering how much it can increase the speed. That's easy to show. Actually, IBM has created a finance simulator to show the differences of option pricing between classical Monte Carlo method and quantum algorithm. Option is a type of derivatives. If you want to buy an option, you can sign a contract with the seller on the strike price. Say, if the future price, which is also called the spot price, increases, you can buy the same thing with the strike price on that day, so you can earn money. And the money you earn is called payoff. And this diagram shows different spot prices predicted by a quantum computer. And each spot price has a probability. So if you select, say, $1.9 as the strike price, the white line will tell you how much profit you can make, but overall you should calculate the money you can make, which is the payoff. If I hit test, it will generate the payoff comparison between the Monte Carlo and quantum algorithm. As you can see, quantum algorithm converges much faster than the classical Monte Carlo method. The estimation error is how much each calculation deviates from the final converged value. So now we get the payoff. Then we can determine if it's worth buying this option today. So now we have the ability to get the price prediction of the future. But we cannot put all of the money into one asset. We have to spare our money into different areas. Take stock market for example, we have to buy different stocks such as industrial entities or banks or tech companies, anything you think is worthy. After that, we have to allocate our assets to be able to generate the best profit out of it. So at this point, we have to use portfolio optimization and I will talk about it in my next video. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and catch you guys in my next one. Peace.